Wait, what does it say? Rotate, let, move, I don't know. We shall see how that goes. Let's see, is it upside down? Yeah. Off here. I'm monitoring here in case we get any comments. Oh, and wait, I also need. Hey, everybody, all you millions of viewers out there. How do I share this? Oh, share video. Share. The blue button on the right there. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Copy the link. Facebook, send it out on my personal page. I wish there was a way to like get all this stuff to go at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like I'd like to be able to just go it from here and have it being live streamed out on, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, all that you stuff. You can. Um, there's a thing called Sling Studio. It's like a thousand dollars for the little thing that's the heart of it, and then it's like three. I think it comes with one, but it's like three hundred bucks a pop for each of the camera remotes. That, uh, but what it does is it basically turns your little laptop into a broadcast studio, so you can have like three different camera angles, and one person can go through and switch camera angles, and it, it all like, it handles the stream out to everything. But a thousand dollars. It's a little bit of an investment. So you're saying I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> That's what you're saying. I don't know about your life, man. <laughs> I know that every time I get a couple extra dollars, I'm like, that one. That yeah. wouldn't be that bad. Right. But then I was like, I would have to volunteer to do like a lot of live streaming just to, you know, like, and not even trying to get paid off of it, but just to, uh, you know, make it worth doing. And then I was like, oh, but that means I would have to make a lot of commitments to go mm -hmm. be out in public with people. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I like that more than others. Right, I hear you. <laughs> okay, so this is the Song Project. We're on episode five. I'm here with Lucas McIntyre. Hey. Spokane songwriter extraordinaire. I don't know about extraordinaire, but all right. That was the official title I read on your bio. Oh. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, just to give a heads up before we get started, next week, Thursday, is Valentine's Day. I'm not going to have a guest on. I may air, I may get on and play a couple love songs or something. Who knows? Maybe not. Um, but on the 21st, we'll be back with uh, Joshua Belliardo will be my guest. Followed the next week by Derek Hart. Then Dario Ray, Darren Eldridge, Eric Patton, we got a whole bunch of people coming, Andy Rumsey. Um, and also, uh, starting on the first Friday of March, we will be doing a once a month live version of this at the Downtown Library. Um, it will be in a format a little bit, some of it will be like the original song project. We'll have like about an hour or an hour and a half of a uh, open mic. For original music then um, I'm gonna do about a half hour interview with a featured songwriter and then they're gonna play a whole set of music uh, we'll have some bands and stuff too probably coming in um, and for March the first guest is gonna be uh, Don Hawkins uh, great songwriter if you haven't heard yes. him he's definitely worth checking out so come down to the library first Friday of March and I'm saying first Friday because I don't know the exact date of it and I could probably suss it out here but it's very early, so it's not the 8th, it's going to be like the 1st or 2nd. Um, 
So anyway, here we are with Lucas. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Okay, well, go. I don't have any questions, so you just tell me all the things. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, Lucas was awesome about giving me... Uh, uh, when I asked for links to songs, he, he wrote down a little blurb about each song, which really helps me uh, to dive deeper into like getting some customized questions, which is yeah. awesome. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but let's just start with the really basic one. Like, how did you first get into songwriting? Like, what was your path? Um. So I uh, grew up in Texarkana, Texas, oh, which okay. is uh, nowhere. Um, it, the state line between Texas and Arkansas runs right through the middle of town. It's like 10 miles from Louisiana. Um, it's really not much like Texas at all. It's more like Louisiana. Right. You don't um, sound very Texas. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I recently learned the word for that. It's called code switch. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I sounded a lot like I was from Texas right. 20 years ago right. when I moved here, and then very quickly uh, this town made it clear how they felt about Southern accents <laughs> and the people who had them, um, and so it's right, been gone. Right. Uh, if I get a little drunk or I go home to visit. A few little twins. Yeah, yeah. or if I'm yeah. on the phone with somebody who's got an right, accent right. comes back. But I totally vibe with that. I'm from Virginia, yeah. and same thing. I go back there, and all of a sudden I'm talking a lot more Virginia, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's, uh, I wish I could turn it on and off. Right? Yeah, yeah ladies yeah. are always like, oh, do you have a Southern accent? And I'm like, well... I mean, gosh, I wish I could just make it happen. <laughs> I wish I could, but... So, anyway, yeah, to, yeah, about getting into songwriting, what was the... Um, so, yeah, I grew up in East Texas, uh, and I moved to Memphis uh, in my teens, partially uh, sort of bounced back and forth between Memphis and Texarkana for a couple of years as my parents uh, booted me back and forth like a football. Um, and uh, ended up in, in Memphis when I was... In, 19 but somewhere along the way I had uh, I first bought a drum set um, because that was a cool thing to do when you live in a trailer park next to the airport is right, like, right. might as well have a drum set because they're not going to bother anybody right right <laughs> um, so uh, I started off on drums and then like decided that that wasn't cool enough and I really wanted to be slash um, and so I got a got a guitar and my mom took me down to strings and things in Memphis which is a well-known music store yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a black Charvette that was not, not the full Charvel like the right, Charvette right. and a little crate amp and uh, how old were you at this time? I was 14 maybe okay, 15 okay. yeah um, yeah somewhere in that neighborhood uh, and uh, my uh, brother had a friend uh, Alvin Oliveira who's still playing in bands in Memphis and is still one of the finest guitar players I've ever heard anywhere and it astounds me that that guy has to paint houses for a living right right but you know I guess we all know a bunch of people right. like that um yeah. like I write software documentation right um so anyway Alvin taught me to play I'm pretty sure the first song I learned to play was Strutter by Kiss Oh, okay, uh, okay. It was real simple with that little box pattern. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. And then from there, it was like I was in half ass punk and metal bands uh, for a while. And then uh, I got into Ani DeFranco, it was actually mm. my entree to um, being really into acoustic music because uh, before. I didn't know how to, like, I had all these feels, had all these feels I was trying to get out. Um, right, right. And the only way I knew how to do it was to play louder or faster. Right, right. Uh, more distortion, more volume, right, right. more speed. Like, let's do this, you know. Uh, scream louder, it's fine. Uh, and then I very clearly remember, um, like, there's a song called Dilate actually on her record dialing. Oh yeah, yeah. She hits, I think it's tuned down to C, but she hits the low boom. And it's just boom. Right, hits you your know. soul. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, whoa. That was a really powerful note with this acoustic guitar. And then I was like, man. And then, so I, I sort of got the idea. I was like, okay, well, you can have power and you can have aggression and you can have this sort of stuff with an acoustic guitar. You don't need... 
Right. You know, right. Uh, by that point, I had uh, on my 18th birthday, I went to a music shop in South Haven, Mississippi, which is just right across the border from uh, where I live in Memphis, and um, financed a uh, Hughes and Kettner 4x12 closed back cabinet and uh, an attacks rack preamp three channel tube. Uh, tube crunch and distortion in a solid state clean with the MIDI learn mm -hmm. deal and a 200 watt power amp uh, which I still have <laughs> I haven't fired them up in probably a decade right, I have no right. idea what the condition that's like my JC 120 right there Yeah, had it forever not sure if it even <laughs> yeah it was like I'm 18 somebody will give me credit let's right. make bad decisions right. <laughs> uh, so yeah um, but I bought the first acoustic guitar I really had was, I still have it, it's a Charvel Acoustic Electric, uh, beautiful guitar, um, takes beating, I've never taken particularly good care of it, it still sounds okay, right. it's acoustic electric, uh, it has a big ding in the back so I got a really good deal on it, um, but yeah, and then I, I sort of, from Audio to Franco, I started getting more into acoustic stuff, I got into the Indigo Girls, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then I hit on Springsteen's Nebraska. Oh yeah. Um, and then Springsteen in general. And then it's sort of like, I just I started realizing that there was a lot of music out there that you could, um, you know, you could work out all these things with, with just an acoustic. And then I got to, like it got to be, uh, it got to be where I could write punk songs or metal riffs like you know sleeping right like it wasn't right. a challenge anymore it was like oh yeah there's a formula we'll just chuck right, it right, back right. you know um and not to say there there isn't a formula with writing a song on an acoustic guitar i mean because yeah there is but right. um but you felt a more open kind of it was more of a challenge it was hard like right, I, it was right. really hard i was like if you can sit down and even if you end up with a song that's all loud guitars and stuff, right. if you take it and you strip everything away from it, and it's, it's one person with an acoustic guitar and it still manages to hook people, then you have written a good song. Right, right. Uh, Where it's not about the gimmick of yeah, exactly. It's it, it, it was like I want I want something that like if you take almost everything away from it, uh, is still gonna resonate. Right, um, right. And. 25 years later I'm still trying to write a song that really works right. Um, right but yeah it got to be where it was just it was just like this is really difficult and I don't feel like you know it, it's harder to get people to connect to it right um, in that way than it was to you know just tap into the sort of cheap Right, you know. right. Shred some stuff. And yeah, yeah. It was like I was playing something loud and fast, and we'll yell right, and right. Yeah, yeah. What was what was going on? Like, uh, it, I, don't, I don't know how old you are. So what was I'm the forty three? Okay, 40, so this would have been what like uh, early nineties, late eighties. Yeah, 80s, yeah. Ninety. I turned eighteen in ninety three. So okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you remember a particular? something where so like for most of us right we, we bought our guitars we started playing and then there's at some point where you're like I could write my own stuff or was that sort of right off the bat I you? yeah I sort of always uh, tried to write songs like I was in uh, this band that we uh, we were originally called Jesus wept because um, <laughs> we, we were way into the crow right, uh, right. yeah um, and uh, and like yeah, I wrote these awful, um, like songs that now and, and then, like, I mean you know they were fun, but like, also it's a reflection of where I was as a person, mm -hmm. and, and that's been what's really interesting to me getting older is is that I look at the person I was when I was eighteen or nineteen years old, living in East Texas or in Memphis, you know in the nineties, and it was like, wow, right, that was right. really unfortunate, like you know yeah. like. like <laughs> I just casually embraced some really terrible stuff because I didn't know any better, right, you know? Like, right. um, so, yes, we will not hear anything from prior to me moving <laughs> to Can nine, you still remember, like, the first songs you wrote? Like, I kind of remember. Like, there was a... I, I wrote one 
Um, which I say was sort of a joke, but actually as I've gotten older, I realized, I mean, that, that it would take us off into a complicated discussion. But uh, <laughs> I wrote this song called Lesbian in a Straight Man's Body. Um, okay. But, uh, which, I mean, sort of fits. Like I have, thanks to a fun childhood that I had, uh, I tend to get along with women better, mm -hmm. like most mm -hmm. of my friends are women. Um, so, like, yeah. But in that period, you could have these ideas about, like, how you identify it. And like, right. oh, yeah, well, right. I'm obviously this. So, right. um, now I just don't, like, in the interest of not offending people who are much more, you know, uh, invested in, in what that <laughs> ends up being for them, like, I just, like, I don't know. Right. I'm just here. I'm a person. Right. So, right. But, yeah, there was that. And then, like, you know, I, yeah, I had uh, a song called Shirelle and the Worms. Um, which was about somebody who like OD'd and ended up wearing food. Like I, you know, the sort of kid stuff. Right. Uh, really, it really reflected my uh, my naivety and, and inexperience with the, right. the world right. at large. So, um, but yeah. So I'd always sort of. I mean, I have uh, around my nineteenth birthday, I got. A little Tascam Porta Seven cassette four track yeah, and this yeah. drum machine, and like I have just piles and piles right. of like, like of tapes. Yeah, I, yeah tried, I had one of those at college, like the four track. Yeah, I tried to I tried to go back and and go through it and like get some of it um, into a into a format where I could actually listen to it or maybe do something with it, right. but it's just like super time consuming. And, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and I remember I used to think like I used to be so good at it. Like I could program that that Elise's drum machine. Like, right. You know, I, <laughs> and I never wanted to sound like a drum machine, so I got really good at making it sound like a drummer because I was like, what I really want is a drummer, but I live in an apartment. Right. So, right. Right. Um, I'm gonna learn how to program this drum machine, and now when I interact with a drum machine rather than like, I'll use the the drummer thing in GarageBand, which I think is. Fantastic. Oh, it's fucking like, ridiculous! How I mean, it's gotten. yeah, it blows yeah. my mind. I'm like, I'm like, I yeah, I unashamedly use GarageBand. Like, right, I right. have several times considered upgrading to Logic um, or Pro Tools, like a real right. uh, deal. But I'm like, man, you know, I get, I do everything right. pretty much I need. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, now when I play with the drum machine, I want it to sound like a drum machine. I just don't know how to do that. Right, like, right. I don't know right, how to make right. it sound like a drum machine. I can make it sound like a drummer, but I don't know how to make it sound right, like a drum machine. Right. Um, but yeah, so I'd always sort of written songs. Um, and then, yeah, it just didn't start to get like really serious, I guess, until I moved here. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really look to it as, a, as an outlet too much. Like, right, I. Right. Uh, my significant experience in bands was like playing guitar uh, and then uh, I played bass uh, in this really great band uh, called 454 um, which I that's the one that like man I wish we could have kept it together because right, right. like that was the most fun I've ever had but I you know I was playing bass so I wasn't writing right, a lot of songs right. we had a fantastic uh, guitar player singer um yeah, so, um, and then actually, if you go to my SoundCloud, you can hear some of our stuff. We, uh, but yeah, so I got interested in writing songs. I actually got really interested in engineering and producing, which is sort of my dream. Like, right. it, a lot of the time these days, it feels like I write songs just so I can produce them. Right, right. You know? <laughs> it was like, I wish somebody else would come along and let me just take their thing and do it, which is, right, uh, right. in the band, I mean, Stella Jones, like, we do a lot of that. Like, right. Stacy, uh, my partner, she'll write words and... and um, bring in chords uh, and then I'm like okay I'll take that and then right, right. you know I go in and you know it go gets, to town yeah, yeah right. it gets all the stuff right, um, right. do you find that 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 desire to uh, sort of produce and, and engineer uh, has that come into your songwriting so like when you're actually writing are you thinking about well what you know, an aspect of it that's like, well, what am I going to do to this arrangement? Wise? No, so that's the that's the. I try. I've, I've tried many times to change the way I write songs, um, or to try and have a a different um, 
a, a, you know, a different way to do it. But uh, yeah, I tend to like, I'll get a line or two uh, and then I'll write words. Like most of my songs are two great lines and then filler to support right, it. Like right. just something to shore that couple of really great lines right, up. Right. Um, and then, uh, or I'll get a musical idea uh, and I'll sit down and like, when I, I get one and I happen to be at my workstation, like I'll, I'm there. I'm like, I'm there until it's done. Right. Um, I have to get it out. But then I'll, I have a really hard time going back mm -hmm. and writing words Right. And a melody to go to, like you know, I'm like, right. oh well, that's, you know, I didn't. This song wasn't based off of that. Like you know, that wasn't the right. thing that inspired me. Right. It was like right. I was like, oh, I got this little rhythm thing. Like I got this little bit, and I think I could do some stuff with it. Um, and so yeah, I struggle with that, which is I right. I end up with a lot of uh, bits and pieces. Yeah, I end up with yeah. a lot of music that doesn't yeah, have too, words, right. and a lot of words that doesn't have music. Yeah, and um, I get that same thing too, where it's like I've. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be down here and, and get a cool idea, a musical idea, yeah. and then I'm like, well, I'll come back to that later. I'll save it because yeah. I gotta go do something else, whatever. Uh, but it's always hard to come back to. It. Like I, by the time I come back to, it, I'm like, eh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. You know? Like, yeah. yeah. It's like it works better for me if I just like start to finish. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it does. It does feel like when I actually get a full song, um, it sort of feels like lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's like, oh, I've got it. I got this thing. Like, I got holding. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna right, like, right. Um, and so, you know, those tend to uh, those tend to stick around. But right, there are right. some, like, you know, it is. I periodically go through my Google Drive where I tend to upload stuff so I can let people hear it. And right. I go through and I'm like, man, I really gotta do something with that. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know. I go on to doing something else, and like, you know, until the next time I'm like, man, I really gotta do something with that thing. Like, right, that right. song just needs a vocal. Like, right, it's right. Cool. Like, it's got keys. I don't even play keys, but I made I made right, keys right. happen. You know, right, right. Like, <laughs> oh, I'll be in there like putting in little MIDI notes because yeah, I'm a, a crappy keyboard player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be like doing the whole thing. You yeah, know? like, <laughs> yeah, I can uh, I can play two songs on piano. Uh, one is Motley Crue's Home Sweet Home. Uh, and, and the other is Don't Close Your Eyes by Kicks. Okay. So it just tells you a lot about. Right. <laughs> that just sums up your whole background yeah, right there. Yeah, it sums up my whole background. My first concert was, uh, was Motley Crue and Warrant at the Hirsch Memorial Coliseum in Shreveport, Louisiana. That's a pretty decent it's a first doctor, concert. It's a Dr. Field Gator. It's a great show, right. man. That was a great right. show. And then my next one was White Snake. All right. Uh, with Kicks, actually. So, All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to feel like there was a period of time where I felt like, like my first concert was the Ramones, and um, I know there was a time where I was like, man, you know, because my intro to that whole world of songwriting was the Ramones, yeah, and it was like that punk just hit me like a fucking brick, and I was like, whoa, yeah, yeah, songwriting, it's, this is easy, you know, I could just, yeah, I could three chords, pump out some, you know, yeah, um, but there were times later in my musical path where I I was like, well, I kind of wish that my introduction had been through something a little more complex or a little yeah. more, you know, like, what if my first intro had been through, like, Stevie Wonder concert? Yeah. You know, a whole different path. Right. You know, but at the same time, it's like, well, that was the path that I was yeah. on. And, well, and I feel like there's still things about that that, were, that are really good, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mostly, like, other after I learned Strutter, uh, I started buying guitar magazines and learning Metallica songs out of the back of guitar right, magazines. Right. Like, you know, like, I, yeah. You know, I can still do a capable inner Sandman, but like, right, right. Um, <laughs> we're gonna test that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I was, I'm embarrassed about that. Actually, <laughs> uh, that's good. I have to make up for that. Um, so, but yeah, and, and but there are a lot of times where, like now, especially when I've moved into a more kind of thoughtful. Um, like I don't have as much time to dick around with it as I right, used right, to. Right, right, So used to, I could just sit around unemployed, right. half wasted, <laughs> in my underwear, you know, watching Oprah and like playing guitar all day. And you know, now it's like, oh, I don't have that kind of time. Right, right. So now I have to be a lot more focused, a lot more right. intentional about right. it. Um, because 
you know, and, and at that point, I wish I had more of a musical education. I did play flute in junior high and high school band, um, but I can't read music anymore. Right. And I can't really play a flute anymore either. Um, but so, yeah, the, you know, now it's like, oh, I really wish I knew that, you know, uh, this note is the flat fourth of a G right, chord. Right, and then right. if I just anchor the melody there, it's going to sound really cool. And I only know how to say that because I started watching Rick Beato <laughs> videos. <laughs> okay. Like, that guy does this series... Uh, everything music on YouTube. If you have not checked it out, immediately go check it out. He has like 54 episodes of a thing he does called What Makes This Song Great. Oh, nice. Where he, a lot of the times, has the multi track masters. Oh, uh, so he can, he can pull So he can go out. through and you can, he can solo out the bass part and go listen right, to this. Right, you know, right. this is what, and it, it like, it, it really just is like, listen to the interplay here. Listen to like how, you know, Kurt Cobain sings this note and he may right, not have known right. it. That was what he was doing, uh, but that's what he was doing, and that's why it sounds so cool. Because right. you know, musically, it's like, well, that note is in the scale, but it's not one of your common ones. And right. So, right. Yeah. So now I'm like trying to get more of a musical education uh, via, you know, why is that tool right. song so right, good? Right, right, and, right. and he does a really broad range of stuff. Like he, you know, did some really some prog band I've never heard of, you know, and right, like, right. he's on Coldplay and like just tons just of, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's not, not really married to a particular thing. Cool. Uh, but yeah. So nowadays when I write a song, I wish I knew more about music. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I've noticed it's interesting, you know, now hearing about your background and coming from Texas and everything, because one of the things that struck me listening to your songs was, uh, uh, there's a definite, uh, Texas vibe to them. I mean, because one of the things that reminded me a little bit of like uh, Steve Earle, it had a little bit of yeah. that kind of. Like, oh yeah, I uh, Steve Earle, Towns Van Zandt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lyle Lovett, like Robert Earl Keen. Like I am. I I just made a playlist today for somebody um, that I'm not done with, and it was like, I think I have six artists on it and there's a hundred and something songs right, and I'm just right. like I'm like oh you gotta have this one and you gotta right, have you're this like one, deep you diving on one. everything right and I was like oh man and actually I did a few years ago um I did a show at the shop uh I, we called ourselves One Star Review R-E-V-U-E um and it was all songs by Texas artists nice um and yeah it's it's definitely like I never want to live in Texas again but um right you know, it's like, a rich thing to draw from. For yeah, sure, like yeah. like most Texans and Montanans and Alaskans, like I am very much a Texan first. You know, right, like right. Um, regardless of how I feel about the place now. Um, so, and I I connect with that. You know, I connect very much with the music uh, from there and those kind of. So you're saying you were songs. super psyched when George W. got elected, right? Because like bringing Texas to the. My <laughs> my dad worked on Ann Richards' gubernatorial campaign. All right. And uh, I phone banked for Bill Clinton in '92, so yes. uh, in Texarkana. So he actually popped right. in. Like, yeah. my mom met Ann Richards. Yeah. in Thailand, of all places. That's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what was the first? Uh, what's the first song you wanted to play? Because I have some questions about specific songs. So, um, well, tell me what what you've got, and I'll tell you if I'm. But if I remembered that one. Um, well, okay, so the first the first one I wrote a question about was Glory Bound. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to ask me about it first, or do you want me to play it first? Yeah, let me just ask about it first. Um, so here's what I wrote down, because I think you mentioned that this one, was this the one you, you said you feel like it's a, kind of a throwaway, yes. but people seem to like it? Yeah. Um, what do you make? What do you feel makes for that disconnect we sometimes get the way we view our songs compared to how other people view them? Um, it was just like it was a fun little guitar part. I actually sort of developed it uh, with this band I'm in called the Tourist Union, um, which is very folky. It's guitar, banjo, and violin. Like, right? Um, and it's it's got a you know it's 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 a good upbeat number. Um, it's kind of bluesy um and I was I just did it for the riff like I was like oh this is kind of right, fun riff. right um, and I just made up some words to go on it and then right. I was like that's whatever it's not that great right um, right because another one of my big influences uh coming up with Stevie Ray Vaughan mm -hmm. like I very clearly for remember sure. where I was in my neighborhood when I heard on the radio that he died and how hard I begged my mom not to make me go to school that day 
I was like, you know, I'm never going to play like Stevie Ray Vaughan. But like, you know, I loved that kind of stuff. And again, that's another, right. you know, it's another right. Texas thing. But um, yeah, so I just thought, I was like, yeah, it's not a, it's not a great song. It's not, the words don't mean anything, like really. It's, right, it's, right. There's no through line too much about it. Um, and uh, I was just like, lyrically, it's not that great. And it was just a half-assed musical idea. But like, people dig it. And I, for the longest time, Bought it and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like you know what whatever like who am I right like, right, you know? right like and then I realized like it's my own snobbishness about songwriting right. you know right. it's like right I, and and that's gosh one of the biggest struggles I think any songwriter goes through is getting over yourself yep like yep I cannot get out of my own way sometimes right. like and right. when you start off with like oh well I need to break it not here like yeah and she uses eight million tunings and has this incredible like. Her right, fingers are wrapped right, in electrical right. tape and yeah. fake nails and like, yeah. you know, um, and and then she went into this whole jazz period, like right, just in, right. and it was like, yeah, if that's your bar, like, right, <laughs> that's gonna be tough. Yeah, so it's gonna be a yeah. struggle. Um, so yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, I was thinking about it when when you'd written that about it, because I I have the same, you know, I go through the same thing too, where it's like. And I, for me, when I analyze it in my writing, I think sometimes it's sometimes I feel like if I feel like I didn't put that much effort into one part of the song or another, uh, that then I feel like I'm cheating somehow. Yeah. You know, or uh, maybe the lyrics I was kind of lazy with the lyrics, right. and then somebody's like, "Oh, I really like that one," and I'm like, "Oh." What, don't you like this one better? Well, and then this scared. one's got great lyrics. Right? And, then, and then I'm also scared that like if I. I'm like, all right, well, if I say, cool, you like that, then let me do that all the time. Like, right. <laughs> you know, like, let me just, you know, and that's the other thing. You're like, oh, well, great, you like that. I didn't, you know, it didn't challenge me. It didn't, I didn't, I don't, I'm not particularly attached to it, but people like it. But then it comes down to that whole thing. Like, who are you writing songs for? Right, right. You know, why right. are you doing this? Are you doing this to hear people clap? Or are you doing this because you have to do this? Right, right. Um, and I, I mean, I'm a little both personally, right. like, and I think we all are. If yeah. we're honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> they they get written so that I can get something out. But right. the right. only reason we're here is because I like to hear people tell me I'm good at it. Right. So. Right. right. Um. Oh, which reminds me, uh, if you haven't <laughs> watched, I watched the Springsteen on Broadway thing uh -huh. um, on Netflix. You should watch that if it's you're really good. He yeah, really yeah. he talks about stuff and he's sitting there and he's getting ready to play like uh, my hometown or something. Uh -huh. And uh, he's talking about, like, you know, I somehow became this hero for the working class. He's like, I never worked a day in my life, man. He goes, right, I've been playing that's rock how roll. good I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, I never worked in a factory. Right. Like, but everybody, like, oh, Bruce gets me. He understands. He's like, that's how good I am. And I right, was like, right. it is actually refreshing to hear somebody say, yeah, I'm really good at writing songs right, and right. getting people to connect to them because I have no idea what that life is like. Right. Um, so, but yeah. All right. Well, let's get to some music. All right, let's, then... let's play this thing. Fish a pick out here. Let's see if I remember all the words.
be glory bound. So yeah, I did it all for because I love it. Right, cool. right. And then sometimes you can do just it was just me dinking around. With right, the right. But um, yeah. Sometimes I I feel like uh, one of the reasons I'll have that kind of disconnect with the song is that I'll feel like it's kind of derivative, kind of derivative. Super. Yeah. Um, even if other people don't hear that. Yeah, it's like I'll hear the most subtle thing. Oh, because sometimes you know your inspiration will come from hearing something. Oh, yeah, and then, all the time. You know, like like I'll go through a stage. I'm listening to a band. You know, like say I'm listening to The Shins or something, and then I start writing a song, and I'm like, man, I just stole that, blatantly stole this I... piece of melody. Nobody else, even, and I'm like, doesn't that sound like such and such? And they're like, no. <laughs> I I have a I have a song called uh, Ryan Adams that. Um, I was like, I'm just gonna call it Ryan Adams, and I'm gonna mention <laughs> just him own in it. it. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put his name in the lyrics, so maybe I don't get sued. Right, um, right. <laughs> but because it was definitely uh, super Ryan. Like right now, the first line is pretty directly lifted. I mean, you know, I right. ruined myself. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, he knows how broke I am. But <laughs> it's not worth suing me. I promise. Right, right. I'm on my third divorce. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, I, it is, it is, uh, tough, and you do get inspired by stuff, like, I get inspired all the time, I, it's weird for me, like, I hate, almost, these days, like, I hate when I go to a really good concert, because, like, I went and saw the Wood Brothers when they were in town, and all I wanted to do was, like, I was like, I just, I just, I need my, why my guitar and guitar? Like, why don't right, I have right, a right, notebook? Right. Why am I not scribbling down right, ideas right. right now? Like, I get that same thing. It's like, it's this great concert, but like, a third of the way in, I'm like, I want to leave. I want to go home yeah. and start working on yeah. some shit. You know? I'm like, oh man, I, yeah, I like the way they did that. I want to play with that idea. You know, like, right? Yeah, and then so I don't know I I need to I'm gonna get one of the little flippy reporter type notebooks, right? With right. a very small pen and just. Like, so I can just right. jot down, like, <laughs> do that thing, do that thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so now I'm sure it varies depending on what you're what you're hearing, but when you hear a song that immediately kind of grabs you, uh, what tends to hit you first or hardest? Uh, are, are you a lyrics guy, a riff guy, chord changes? What kind of, what tends to grab you? Um, so I know it could be different for different songs. But. Yeah. Um, Having a, if it's a if it's a full on tune, um, since I've played both bass and drums, um, like having a good groove gets me. Right, right. Um, yeah, same. Like I'm a yeah, and that, and that's like when I'm home, dinking around, uh, like that's the thing. Like oh, you know, I I don't have a bass currently, uh, and it's killing me right. because I'm like. Oh, Want to put down I like it. I've tried doing the keys bass and it's just right, not right. that it's great. Not the like the only one, yeah. the only thing that sounds good doing bass on a MIDI setup is if you do the fretless, like the stand right, up right, bass. Right. That right. sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, it's just completely unsatisfying right, right. because you don't get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's hard to it's hard to make a MIDI. I mean, I know there's I've heard people that can do it. Yeah, but it's yeah. hard. Like you're know, like the guy that did the uh, the Seinfeld. Yeah, and stuff. that's all on keyboard. Yeah, I, um, I was I can't really that surprised that wasn't. I was face. too. I was really disappointed, but also kind of impressed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I would, the there the one I'll, the most recent example that like clearly um, just slapped me right across the face was. Uh, a couple years ago, I was going over to Montana um, to visit a friend, and I had booked a gig at the Whistling Andy Distillery over in Big Fork. Um, and I'm going out towards she lived in Kalispell, so I'm headed for Kalispell, and I'm out. And there's no radios because you know you get you're out there on 
you know, once you leave mm -hmm. paradise, like paradise, the cow spills pretty wide open space. Um, so, uh, I couldn't really get uh, much in the way of, uh, oh, I wasn't on unlimited plan yet. And so I didn't want to burn up my data right, right. listening to tunes that way. And the only thing I really get on the radio was a local station, like a, like a community type radio station, which I'm like, they have that here. Right. Um, <laughs> But uh, Jason Isbell's Elephant came on, and I'd never heard the song, didn't know who it was, but like I listened, uh, and then I pulled over, and, and like the minute I got signal on my phone, I pulled over and started Googling the lyrics because they it came in, like, didn't have an intro or anything, right, right. Uh, to try and find out who it was, and I must have sat on the side of the road. Uh, for a damn near a half hour, <laughs> just listening to it over and over right, and over right. again, and I was just like, "Man, that is a, you know, that is." Uh, Jason Isbell makes it hard to be a songwriter these days right, right. because it's like, man, he is so good. Like, and and it's also super inspiring because I mean he's such a good visual writer. Like he's really, um, and that I'm a really visual person by nature, so I try to. Like, I don't want to have to spell everything out, you know? Right, right. Um, I, uh, I want to I wanna be able to suggest it. And have right, people hand you a it. picture, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, um, but that song was just, you you could just see the whole thing. Like, you could, right. you know, it was so, so very much there. And, I, yeah, I was just hooked. Um, and most everything I've heard from him, I'm just, I'm like, man. That uh, you know, that makes it makes it tough to do. Right. What right. what we do with uh, yeah. that kind of. But again, yeah. You know, good, and it's pushed me to to try and, and do better and. Right. No, I I, I definitely you know meet, you know, not meet physically, but meet songwriters you know, pretty regularly where you, you just kind of you're like, why am I bothering to do this again? Yeah. You know, like for I remember with the. Uh, I first started listening to like Sophie and Stevens. Yeah. And I was like, why do I even bother? Because he's already written all the songs I really want to write. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then same with Justin Vernon from Bon Iver, you know. Like, oh, yeah. Just such great writing. The lyrics, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I used to, the church union, we used to cover uh, I Walked uh, from Sophie and and it's the same progression over. And oh, I know. And it's like, like six minutes. Even. Right. Like, it's right. a really long song. It's right. the same thing. But it was. I would get so like I would get so wrapped up listening to uh, our violin player saying that and like I would get lost in that right. chord progression right. and I'm like this is four it's like A minor D right. C G I think it's like, like uh, Chicago same thing you know yeah just, just same it's, chords and it's over like, and over it's like I'm enjoying this so much that I'm forgetting to pay attention that I'm supposed to be playing this song so right um, <laughs> yeah that are you able would you when so here's this is something I have I sometimes have trouble with are you able to listen to music without your inner songwriter kind of stepping in because I have trouble with that like I I have trouble with it. that um I am still 32 years later very bothered by some of the clumsy wording in Poison's Every Rose Has Its Thorn, which is a song I love. Right, like, right. I, like, I had a, a lot of my, you know, early experience with girls, uh, you know, with that in the background. That was the soundtrack and, to your, yeah. But there's that whole, you know, uh, we both lie silently still. Uh, and it says, and then he says, like, and we both lie close together. And it's like, why didn't you just right. say we're lying close right, together? Right. Like, <laughs> why did you need to put that? Like, of course you're both lying close together. Right, like, right. if one of you's far away, you can't both be like. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, don't be lazy. Right. You know that's, right. that's right. the thing. And um, being a Towns Van Zandt fan, mm. and I, you know, I sometimes wonder, but he swears up and down that like he was like. He was 
very particular about word choice and it was like there are no words that are just there because they kind of fit like right, it right. was like it had to kind of fit in it had to convey you know uh very much what he wanted to say and it was like um one of my all-time favorite songs in the world is poncho and lefty and it's like it's no accident that you know they only let him go so wrong they only let him go so long they only let him slip away they only let him hang around well, when they say they only let him hang around, they hung him. You know, right, it's, right. they caught him. He's dead. You already know he's dead from the early right, start right, of the song. Right. And it was like, you know, and they only did it out of kindness, I suppose. And it was like, well, you know, kindness to who? It's just like that right, song. Right. I, I am still analyzing that song. <laughs> like, and it's so weird because I originally heard it, um, I originally heard the Willie Nelson version, which... Um, is terrible. I'm going on the record with that. I love Willie. I'm a Texan. I'm required to love Willie. Right. But that was a terribly produced s- version of a really, I mean, really phenomenally, like, it is right up there with Boots of Spanish Leather for right, me right. as, like, just one of the great story songs. It, um, it also took me forever to realize that Boots of Spanish Leather is a duet sung by one person. Um... And I didn't realize that until I heard Mandolin Orange do it as a duet, and I was like, oh, "Now it's wow. clicking together, this right?" It makes <laughs> so much more sense now. Like, how could I have missed that? But um, you just get, yeah, right, lost in the in the imagery of it, and that it's just such a you know it's a conversation, right? Um, right. Because I find that too. Because like, my wife will be like, you know, she she likes lots more different kinds of music than I do. And she'll like something, and she'll play something for me, and it's so it's so common for me to just be able to that I have trouble. Like I'll be like, oh, that was, yeah. that's a cheap lyric. Yeah, and then, yeah. and then it's like I can't even enjoy the song the way she's enjoying it, which is just the way somebody yeah. enjoys a song. And I want to be able to do that, right? You know? I, so I, I find for stuff like that, it's um, it helps me to learn to play it. Like, I shit all over Post Malone. Like, right, and right. it's because of him as a human being, really. Right. But, like, I recently learned uh, better, like, to goof around. I was like, I should probably learn a song that's right, been right. written in the last five years. Right, right. By somebody. <laughs> right. right. You know? Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I was, you know, I was like, ah, oh, god damn, this is not a bad song. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and there was a, something else that I... Uh, I was on a couple of years ago where it was the same thing. It was like I went to learn it as a joke, and and I was like, "Nah, oh, man, that's a great song." Like, right, right. Um, and uh, I was like, "All right, I guess." But it does bother me. I on that lyrics music thing. I'm definitely a lyrics guy. Yeah. So yeah. even my me too. My ex, uh, she was like, if a song doesn't catch her with the beat or the melody like right away she can't listen to it at all like she would change the station and then she has to listen to it a few times before she even pays attention to what the words are right and right I'm like, right i'm like you how are did you not, not hear that right <laughs> you were doing this wrong right i'm like it's a whole thing you right know? right it's like i'm gonna eat the icing in between the layers of my cake and then i'm gonna maybe come back to the cake right right you know like right. you're no you can't do right. that right <laughs> you know <laughs> That's blasphemy. You have to take the whole thing. But then it's also, you know, I have to remember that, like, not everybody hears a song the way you or I hear a song. Right, You know, not everybody hears that interplay between the melody and the, you know, not everybody hears, like, oh, man, that bass part is, he's just whomping on a G, and the guitar is moving to all the chords in the, you know, in the scale. Right, right. Uh, And that's, you know, that really works, man. Um... I always tell myself, like, I'm going to write a song where the rhythm guitar part is just a guitar playing, like, a G. Right, and then I'm right, going to do right. all this stuff on top of it. And I'm like, I never do that. Like, right. <laughs> because I would get bored playing a G for three and a half minutes. Right, like, right, right, <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. It is hard. It is hard to just... Um, just enjoy it. Just enjoy yeah. it. Which is why I listen... Like, the songs that I just enjoy are my favorite songs. Like, right, the right. stuff that I unashamedly love and yeah, have yeah. analyzed to death and like I can just enjoy the whole thing right, because I'm right. like this this is a good song and it's right. a good song that satisfies whatever 
vibe I need right now. Right, you know? right. Um, yeah. Now, when you when you said that, like you had a that you kind of felt that there was a, sort of a throwaway aspect to Glory Road. Glory Bound, uh, yeah. Glory Bound, sorry. That's all right. uh, it made it made, reminded me of. I was just reading it. I was reading an interview with Paul Simon, and he was uh, he was talking about Mrs. Robinson <laughs> and how. Even to this day, he feels embarrassed when he sings the lie, 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 because it was, it, it exists in that way because he couldn't think of a lyric. And so he was just, when he was writing the song, he was just like, lie, lie, lie. And, oh, and yes. he ended up going into that. And, and he said, even now when he performs it, he feels like he's, it's cheating somehow yeah. when he gets to that part. Because <laughs> it just wasn't, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. And yet to other people hearing it, it's like, well, that's an iconic song. Of you know the seventies or whatever, yeah, sixties. Um, yeah, I know. And then what? Um, yeah, one of the songs, postcard. Um, Ben Sanyu doesn't even have a chorus, right? Like it's right. just vocals. Right. There's this nifty little harmony to it. And it's like yeah, I don't know, I got nothing. Got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and that's another thing. It's hard for me to break out of. I always I like I want to break out of songwriting structure, but I'm like, dude, I am so wired into four, eight, sixteen, you know, four, yeah, twelve, sixteen, yeah, yeah. like right. uh, three times, and then the fourth one's different, like right, you know, right. um, oh, I got a bridge, the bridge is gonna be, right. you know, like so, um, I get angry at myself about that, and then again, that's a thing, like I want to be able to get over myself, like oh man, I really want to write something, and you know. 12 7 time and like right. you know or whatever right, right um with all these bizarre chords and but it's like you know i accidentally get weird right. chords right and, right <laughs> um happy accidents yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like oh that sounds all right that's pretty cool right, right. um so yeah well let's get another song this time you're gonna choose a song and then i'll ask about it afterwards okay um oh all right i don't want to play and then you can ask me about it. Okay. Oh, and before we do that, actually, because your guitar is like pretty loud, it pretty is pretty projecting. Yeah. So I actually want to get okay. a little bit more on the mic so I can. Yeah. Since this is songwriting, I do want to yeah. make sure I got your your uh, vocals. It's uh, also you can uh, tell that I started off as a guitar player because I'm really comfortable with my guitar playing. Um, right. Right. And I tend to hide as a singer. And that's something I'm I'm working on. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Doesn't have to be this way 
we could just call a truce Doesn't seem to get anywhere So what's the use? We'll keep telling our loved ones Terrible things that we've done So much easier to be monsters That was well. I don't know. Oh yeah, no, I really did like the instrumentation on it. Yeah, right, right. Ukulele and banjo and right. And I, and you, I think you said that was a song. Is the nicest song I wrote about my ex wife. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I if that was yeah no, public was, or private, so I didn't want to say. No, it no, no. I, she's heard me play it. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> she comes to my gigs. It's great. Okay. <laughs> we get along good. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about that song, like how, where that... Um, it, so it came from right, um, right after we split, um, it's one of the first holiday seasons, so we have a daughter together, it was one of the first holiday, um, seasons where, uh, like, we were kind of okay after the split, like the first holiday or two was kind of kind of rough but it was sort of like where we were just um you know we were in an okay place but like I was not invited to Thanksgiving or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and like I I know I was talking to her and like her grandparents were there or whatever and it was just like you know it, it struck me that like there's this um you know there's the I guess it kind of went back to so I I was talking with when, when the split was active actively happening I was talking with my friend who was a writer um, and I actually know a lot of writers because my ex-wife went through the MFA program at okay, Eastern yeah, yeah, yeah. while we were together and so like I went to a lot of events and like the, so which is another thing that haunts my songwriting because like I hung out with all these really talented poets and right, writers right. and I was like man you guys set a high bar right, um, right. so I'll, I'm like, well, I don't have a fancy education, but like, I'll, uh, you know, I'll give it a go. I'll try not to be an embarrassment with it. Um, anyway, but I was t telling her, and I was like, well, you know, there's three sides to every story, man. There's my side, there's her side, and then there's the truth. She was like, no, dude, it's all the truth, you know. And yeah, I was like, right. what do you mean? It was like, you know, she's like, well, there are facts, you know, there are in undisputable facts. Like, if you knock a glass over, that is a fact. The glass is knocked over. Right. But why you did it, you know, or what it meant, that's everybody that experiences that has a different truth about what that event was. Right. And it's not any less real to anybody, right. you know? Right. So uh, it sort of got this idea in my head that, you know, like, um, you know, when I would talk to my family, uh, I would just be like, oh, she did, you know, and I never highlighted the nice things she had done or the you know the good things right like right and so it was sort of this idea that once you split like you go off and like you know you're horrible to my family and your family thinks i'm terrible and right. you know and um it's just it's a lot easier that way than to than to to be um compassionate and, yeah, and yeah. to really be like you know no you're not terrible like um so yeah, the song is you know it's easy to be monsters. It's easy to be made into a monster, like, right? Right. Um, whether it's true or not, right? And actually, I mean, it is true, but like whether <laughs> you feel it's right. valid, whether right. you feel it's fair or accurate, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, that idea of uh, truth, like that, I, I still sometimes just meditate on that, you know, because because it is a really powerful thing. You're like, well, you know, we experience this thing different, but. It doesn't mean it was any less true for either one of right. us, you know, right. because you can't have access to other people's motivation. Right. right? You can right. you can observe their actions, but you don't know why they did that. You right. even right. if they tell you, right? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You just can't know if that's honest. 
right. you know, if that's the right. real story. And so, or that part of the story they're telling themselves too, because right, that's a whole other layer. That's right? a whole other layer. Right? We're also creating these narratives yes. for ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. That divorce us from the truth. Yes. Of a thing. Right. Even, because right. Because you know, yeah, we don't. So I'll say, oh, I'm doing this because of this. Yeah. But sometimes that's a lie I'm telling myself. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's what my ex-wife commented. I'm totally aware. On you on the stream there. So hi Jennifer. Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what that uh, that's what that song was about. Right um, and it was kind of early. Um, so I pl I've been playing forever, like, um, and I but I sort of went through this period. Like I moved to Spokane, and I didn't know anybody. I like literally did not know anybody. Uh, except my ex Jennifer um, and so I didn't know musicians and like uh, she wasn't 21 yet so like we couldn't go to do stuff that I would do in Memphis because I was 23 when I moved here right. um, so like I just it got sort of isolated and then we had a baby and got married and I went to college full time and worked full time at the same time and sort of just did not leave a lot of room for playing guitar and writing songs yeah, yeah. And, and really being in touch with that. So like I played, you know, enough to kind of keep my fingers in shape um, and, uh, you know, mostly covers like, right, I right. can probably, uh, I can probably play a half a dozen Ani DeFranco songs off the top of my head, like, right. um, which is weird because when I play gigs now, like I always have an iPad or a notebook because I'm terrible at sorting things out but it's weird how some of them kind of stick right um yeah. but uh so yeah i just i went through this long period where i didn't really do anything and then we split up and um i spent uh christmas house sitting for friends and i was by myself and i was like i'm gonna write a song like i'm going to write a song because i have nothing else to do um except you know walk their dogs um so I uh, I decided to do it, and um, you know, and I I did like I wrote a song. I actually recorded it. Um, I wish I could play it. Uh, I only remember part. Of it. I think I tuned. I think I was playing around with like the E's tuned to D, or it was like A and D, or like I don't. Right. I was doing one of those cute things, right, right, and right. then later I'm like, I don't know. I get part of it, but like. Um, but so I, I wrote a song, I think that was like late 2010, 2011, maybe. Um, and then a couple years later, I started going to uh, an open mic at um, Red Rooster Coffee House, which my friend Amanda uh, and her husband at the time owned. Uh, and so we, I went to that, um, she called it the open mic of openness, uh, and I sort of found my tribe there. Like, I yeah. Did, um, so that was when I first started performing in public, I think it was 2013. So like okay. really, I've er only been really earnestly doing this thing. Doing like this thing. Yeah, doing yeah, this, this thing, thing for like six years now, five, six, you right, know, just right. not, not that less than a decade where I really like took my ability as a guitar player um, and really applied it to the, the craft of being a songwriter and I also need to remind myself of that sometimes like right, right. you know like yeah you've been able to play a guitar for 30 years but like right. you weren't trying to do this and you weren't right. trying to do it well certainly right like, right you know, right um, and it's gotten to where it's it, it's weird it's one of those things like the more you play the more you do it the more you like you know I'm not horrified of my voice over a microphone right, right. anymore you know and I'm, I'm starting to real you know it's like oh I've got a little more control over how I'm singing and you know how I'm phrasing things and how I deliver certain lines without it you know see and yeah it's, it's that sort of thing like I can still feel myself growing and right, progressing right. at it uh in some ways more as a performer mm -hmm. um the, the writing part being seems to come slower yeah, yeah just being comfortable um but yeah so I went through a long period of not doing anything and then a you know, since then it's been like, you know, that's everybody like, oh, hey, Lucas, you're the guitar guy, right? You're the, you know, that songwriter right, guy. Right, I'm like, right. yeah, that's me. That's right. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. 
Um, but life gets in the way sometimes, and that's you know that's okay right. because it. Uh, I don't know. Right. I'm not unhappy with where I'm at as a human being. Right. So. So now that song, Monsters. Yeah. That's like. Pretty clearly, directly, from your life. Right? Yes. Like I mean, that's just. Is that your general approach? Do you tend to what? Are you a, a personal writer or? Um, mostly. The, the majority of um, majority of the songs that I write are personal in one way or another. Right. Like, you know, even Glory Bound, which is a throwaway. Well, that's true. I did move to Spokane in 98. Right, you know, right, like, right. I was born on the Red River is right there in Texarkana. So, like, um, but, th- yeah, I have only once really like really one time have I nailed um writing something that was pretty much just an invention right like totally foreign totally fully foreign and um it uh I was just a couple years ago and we were driving we had gone to my most recent ex uh, her family lives in White Rock, D.C., and we had gone to visit them, and the idea was we were going to camp somewhere in the North Cascades on the way back, but like the entire state was on fire that summer, and all the campgrounds were closed, uh, or there were like burn restrictions, or, you know, there was, like, it was not, and we were driving and driving and driving and trying to find some place and trying to find some place, and we couldn't, and so we finally we stopped in Winthrop and um, went to the old schoolhouse there with brewery was just wonderful um and uh and then we decided well fuck it we're just going home you know like and at this point it's pretty late and like we've been on the road all day and so um we go and the clouds i mean the whole everything's smoky and hazy and gross and it gets good and dark and we're still driving somewhere around brewster um like you know, there's nothing there but like big sheds and apple crates and right, like, right. <laughs> you know trains and you know those little migrant uh, camp things. Yeah. Um, and um, but we all of a sudden like the haze cleared and it was just stars like. Incredible, um, beautiful. Right, no light pollution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and like I hadn't, like, growing up in Texarkana, it was pretty easy to see that. Like it's, yeah, um, it's pretty easy to get, a, you know, a little, you didn't even have to go very far out of town uh, to, to just see, you know, that kind of, uh, that kind of sky. But I hadn't seen, you know, the night sky like that in so long. And, um, and then so I, and I started, started wondering, I was like, well, what's it like to grow up here or be from here, you know? Like, there's nothing. Like, I thought there was nothing in my hometown, but there was really nothing. Like, really nothing. nothing. Like, yeah, there really was nothing. really nothing in Brewster, Washington. Right, and like, right. um, And so, yeah, I was, I was like, uh, I was like, I don't, I wonder what that's like. And then I, so I, then I wrote a song about uh, what that, what I thought that would be like, or, or sort of a story based on, um, what I thought that would be like, and I, like, I mean, there are some parts of it that I definitely identify with, like, right. you know, I was sure as hell happy to get out of my hometown, right, like, right. um, and, uh, but yeah, so that was, uh, that was my m- most successful attempt at, and that's a song called Big Sky, that, if I have a, if I have a hit, <laughs> if I have a local hit, a song that people, like, once they start hearing me play, they're like, oh, yay! Like that would be it. Yeah, uh, um, you wrote that, and the thing that that's one that tends to resonate with. Yes, people. and I'm okay with that. I'm like, good, good. Yes, feel good about that song. Put on your analytical cap for a second, and we're switching gears a little bit. But yeah, why do you think that is? Like, if you had to, like, if say it's not your song, yes, you're listening to it. I wrote it. Okay. What do you? What is? What is it about it that that you think pulls people in? Um, it's so. It, I mean, it's ultimately it's a song about loss, um, and a song about uh, regret, and like 
you know, and not being able to, um, I mean, there's a line in the song that says, no matter where you go, there you are. Like, you know, you can change your, you can go to a different city. Crocodile you can go, Dundee there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, you're gonna, <laughs> I remember you said that. Yeah. You're going to be, that's it, man. Like, you know, um, and so you can go to the big city and you can go do this stuff, but you're still going to be you. Right. You know, right. Um, you know, you can, shit, man, like, I have done a, I've done a lot of therapy in the last four or five years and, you know, but. And, and a lot of things about me that I didn't like are improved, but at the end of the day, like, I'm still me. Like, right. you know, there's still stuff about me that I'm like, how, how do you do that, man? Right, right. Like, why do you have to be like that? Um, and, and so that's that sort of thing. And, and it's also like, you know, there's a an element of lost love, or, you, you know, you like sort of thing. Right, like it, right. You, that longing for a more kind of innocent, um, and I, I think that's pretty universal. Like, most people right, can really... Right. Get relate that. to yeah, it. it's it's, yeah, it's yeah. super relatable. It's it's not um, you know it, it's not uh, yeah it's not hyper specific. Uh, it has a it it has a not like a not exactly traditional song structure. Mm -hmm. um, the it is finger picking, um, right. which people dig. Uh, and there's a couple of chords that I use in that that are your normal kind of. So I mean, it just sort of all came together right, right, you know? right like it's a it's a beautiful guitar part um right. and um and then i managed to make something happen with it um and i have to um have to give credit to uh nick walker or the the nicholas peter as he goes by uh when he's performing for there's a chord in there that like he was like sort of showed me and i was like oh i like I've, I've it's like a suspended chord or something. Yeah, it's, it's like this this thing, that. which is like a D F sharp kind of thing. Right, right. It, uh, but it's sort of inverted you know, in a way. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it it really worked. Um, and I was like, oh man, yeah, no, that's the that was the that was the thing that the whole house right, is right. built. That's the foundation. This whole song is built on is that. Right, right. <laughs> um, so. Well, this seems like a perfect segue. I was going to say, I should probably play it now. <laughs> I'm going to uh, turn the guitar up a little since you're finger picking. Yeah. I turned it all the way down because that drumming was... And then, you know, I'm similar to you in that sense because, like, coming as I did out of the punk space, yeah. you know, my, my instinct is, I'm going to beat the shit out of this yeah. guitar. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I have been beating the shit out of this yeah. guitar. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I could talk about this guitar for a while. So this is Big Sky. Drove to the edge of town Where the sky turns dark All these 
famous people But you still can't see the stars And the big, big light Underneath the small sky Well, it ain't everything I thought it would be I heard you got married Bought a place at the edge of town Just before the light fades And the stars shine down Tell me, do you walk To that place we used to go Tell me, do you wonder do you already know what might have been if I didn't go? You got a big high and low burning behind your eyes, and now I know it should have been mine. It should have been mine. Got a good, good life underneath the great big sky. And now I know you should have been mine. You should have been mine. You could have been mine. You could have been mine. You should have been mine. The big hit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, it's a, has that and, and and has that appeared on an album or anything? Or yeah, that's uh, actually on the Tourist Union's album Safe Camp. Um, it's got banjo and violin. It's beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It was interesting. That, I think I sent you like three versions yeah, of that song, yeah. so you can see like how it goes from, um, you know, I think when I originally started the first time I did it, it was like, right, right. It was a little more banjo-y, uh, right, right. And then by the time it got recorded, it was, it was a little more laid back, a little, little right. uh, sadder, a little more reluctant. Right. Um, it's interesting how things kind of sometimes like. How that slowing down happens yeah you know? um, certainly for me like when I listen back to stuff that I you know like that my band played when we first started in the early 90s and it was like man how do we why were we playing that stuff so fast yeah you know because it's really like you know Bob Barley was one of my all-time favorite artists uh, and my favorite period of his time is in the late 70s when everything just sort of like yeah it's like suddenly they decided to like start swimming through treacle you know yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. they went from that jet jet to just that jet, jet, jet. and it was yeah. just something about that i don't know it's like but it's easy to write oftentimes you first write something and like it'll be so much faster than it ends up yeah. being uh i'm not gonna lie part of the reason it slowed down is because that is like uh, if, I, work if, out. I, if I play that late in the late in the set, man, right. it is, oh my god, I can't make it through. My right hand is like, right, I right. hate you. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. that's too though. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, I'm 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 proud of that too. Right on, right on. Um, well, I wanted to. Uh, you mentioned something about I asked you about an album, and then you said it was bad. So. Because um, I'm, I'm notoriously bad at remembering to do this kind of thing. So, uh, do you got some upcoming stuff or anything that you want to plug? 
to our 1.7 billion viewers? Uh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I actually don't have anything on, uh, on the books right now. I'm terrible at every year. I'm like... I'm gonna do it this year. Oh my god, I do the same thing. I'm gonna and I wait too late. I'm gonna put like I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a proper uh, one sheet together. I'm a proper EPK like, and I I have I have a beautifully designed page like, I you know, but then I'm life happens and like I you know played a gig not too long ago and I was like, you know, um, if, when you're doing like. And I, and I do it to myself and I enjoy it because like as a one thing when I started out like I did not want to play covers ever like I was right, like I don't right. <laughs> you know um, right. and now I'm like man I you know it's I really enjoy it and it, part of it is that like you know it pushes you out of your comfort zone you're like oh well here's a song um, especially if you latch onto one that's maybe not exactly um, right, right in your range or like and so you have to do a little work on it to yeah, kind of yeah. make to make it fit and it's like the best way to get inside a song and, and understand it and then Absolutely. be able to learn something from it that you can apply to your own right songwriting is to just learn to play it man and right, get out right. and play it a bunch of times and like you know you're like oh yeah right let's see how that works now like yeah um so yeah now i but i so i take a lot of those gigs where it's like oh well show up and play two hours you know right um, and uh, it takes a lot. Like w once you start getting really serious about doing a good job at it, um, and getting comfortable at it, like it just it takes a lot out of you. Right. Like I sweat buckets. Right. Like um, and I always forget. To, I never drink enough water beforehand, right. Right. and so for like the, the rest of the weekend, right. I'm dehydrated <laughs> right. and I feel terrible, and I'm like feel like I drank too much but I don't really drink anymore so right. like you know um yeah so that's uh but so I'm really bad about setting stuff up and I'll end up like you know it's weird because I'm friends with a lot of uh local singer songwriters and man I mean, some of these guys are booked out such a lie oh, yeah. already yeah. and I'm just like and I was like, yeah, that's why I can never get in a gig at that place because yeah, like, yeah. it's been like the, by the, the time I yeah. start thinking about like, oh man, it'd be nice to play some gigs out on a right. patio. Like, yeah, they book patio season in November. Right. You know, I always <laughs> think the same thing about that at the park bench place. Yeah. Like yeah. I, every year I'm like, oh man, I should get in on that. Yeah. And then by the time I think about it, it's like, of course it's already booked. I know. All summer. You know? So but, like, I have. Um, <laughs> I want to before I say this, I want to say I love you all dearly. Um, please don't hold this against me. But I tend to play at a couple of venues where uh, I know the bookers really well, mm -hmm. and they are not the most on the ball mm. bookers in the world. So it's not hard to get a gig with like a month away, right? You know, right. Like, um, or to like get on their oh shit list, like, yeah, like yeah, somebody yeah. dropped out two days before. Can you come yeah, yeah. and do this? Right. right. Um, yeah, I do. I guess I do have like one kind of gig coming up, but it's not a public gig. I, uh, my friend Jesse is an activities coordinator at uh, a nursing home, and she's on the memory care unit, and so every couple of months I go and play tunes for the folks on the memory care unit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it's one of the more rewarding gigs, and it's also sort of challenging, because I'm yeah. like, what, I started off, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to play songs sort of from their era, and that, that works okay, but then... I went in around Christmas time, and uh, one of the, I don't know if she was actually one of the residents or if she was a staffer, but she was like, play, like, you know, like, I'll fly away. Like, stuff that they absolutely have known since childhood because they can sing along, because they, that is there. Like, that's embedded deep enough that it doesn't go away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, now I'm like, oh, cool. I'm gonna try that this time, you know. Um, right. And so it's been interesting that in in learning how to work w with an audience and or to read an audience, right, um, right, and and to sort of develop as a performer because I mean it can be sort of uncomfortable. It's like I don't do they remember me? Like I don't right. know. Like, right, right, right. You know, um, and you know it. Yeah, but it, it it the first time it was a little 
disconcerting, but I kind of, I was like, you know, like, I think the first time I played Folsom Prison Blues, and they really dug it, like, everybody right, was, like, right. really into it and singing along, I was like, all right, you know, so now it's like, you know, it's a challenge, it's like, oh, I want to be able to give them, like, an hour, it's a super short gig, but, like, I want to be able to give them an hour of, like, you know, top to bottom, all killer, no filler. Right, um, right. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, I need to get less lazy about um, about booking. I also, like, I, was, I worry, um, it's really, there's sort of, like, two classes of uh, performing kind of artists in town and it, maybe it's that way in every town but it's like you know I sometimes wonder I'm like well because like I'll pick up a cover gig and promote the hell out of it like does that hurt me when I want to try and get a gig at a mm. venue where I'm going to play you know a 30 45 minute set of original stuff like right, you know, am I right. do too like oh am I pigeon oh it's like because that's not my whole thing you know <laughs> like, right right um so yeah I wonder about that sometimes, but that's not necessarily songwriting. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, it is an interesting thing. And I, I think there's also, like, I, I know for, for me anyway, um, and it's and it, and I know that it's totally stupid, right? Because, I mean, like, I run my own business, okay? And I I have to talk to people on the phone, yeah, I, yeah. you know, and I'm, and I'm comfortable with people. I don't have a problem with it, but I hate talking about it. Like yes. I just don't like talking on the phone. Yeah. And I can I can think of like, well, how how is it that I would manage to like maybe not totally derail would be maybe too strong of a word, but kind of, you know, derail my own musical career based entirely on the fact that I just fucking hate calling people up. Yeah. Like I hate calling up a club and, and it's it compounded by I hate trying to talk myself up. Yeah. I you know I like, have the hardest I, time with I, that. I hate being like Hey, you should hire me. I'm right. fucking amazing, man. Yeah, yeah. Hear my music, it's badass, you know? Yeah. And some people are really good at doing that some in a way are. that doesn't come across. But I always feel like, God, I'm kind of an asshole if I like yeah. my my own horn. Thing, I know, there's you know? there's like, a you have to um <laughs> as I uh I don't know, I've always been so like since I was fourteen years I started dating my first wife when I was fourteen. And we were together almost to the minute I married my second wife. I mean, like, we were legally married anyway. But, like, almost ten years. Um, and then I was married to my second wife. And we were married for, like, ten years. And I was single for, like, a year. And then the most recent one, we were together for, like, seven years. So, like, I don't have a ton of experience dating. Because I'm right, a relationship right. dude. You know? Right, and so right. I sort of feel like it's the same way of looking. But at the more I sort of have explore that, not that I want to talk too much about my personal life, but like it's sort of that thing. Like you have to find that balance between right. like not downplaying yourself so much right, that, right. Um, that you're <laughs> undesirable. Right. And, but not like talking yourself up so much right, right. Um, that you're an asshole. Right, um, right. And there's that, yeah. And so... Because it, because it's something that like, and there's like there's some there's some people there's some musicians, uh, who you know like and, and we all know these people that are like, you know you, you you run into them for like two minutes and they're like let me play you a new song yeah gonna, gonna, gonna. and I always feel really awkward about that I'm like like okay yeah that's not like that's kind of a weird. You're not really reading people. You're kind of in a bubble, right? Because it's like it's all about you. maybe I don't really want to just. It's yeah. nothing that I don't like it. I just maybe I don't want to sit and listen to a song for ten minutes while yeah. you do this. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, but that there's those people that are just so outgoing, right? They're like, hey, let me play you my new song. You know, I know. And it's it's really interesting that I've met some notable, I guess, uh, people that are really not though. You know. Yeah, yeah. They also tend to be the most talented people, <laughs> and no, right. like, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know, once they get going, like, there's no, there's no denying it. Um, right, right. Like, uh, I feel, I'll, I'll give an example of that. Like, um, I have on more than one occasion um, been derailed mid song uh, by Marshall McLean showing up at wherever I was playing because I'm like, 
oh shit, man, he's so good. Like, <laughs> what? Oh, come on, man. Like, now I'm all nervous, you know? Right, like, right. Uh, and just bone, bonehead something out, you know? Right, and it's, right. it's, it's, he's a super talented guy, total sweetheart. Right, like, right. Um, super nice guy. Um, but yeah, and it's just like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, there's right. like, it's some magic, uh, magic for me. Or it's just that, like, you know, I'm in an age where, like, I don't want to, you know, I don't have it in me to go sit in bars and try and make nice with, you know, the people there to, to try and get in. Right, right. Um, because, Typically, if I spend that much time in a bar, nothing useful or productive is going to happen. <laughs> right. Like, I'm in a—I mean, I owned a bar, so like, right, you right. know, I—I I know how that, what happens when you leave me unattended <laughs> uh, in those environments, and it is not pretty at all. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. But then I'm also like, eh, you know, right. I—I like it. I would love it. You know, I—I I know a few people who who scrape out a living doing music full time and right. like you know good good on you um I just don't know how to get there and I'm not sure that that's exactly what I want right, at, right. you know this particular moment right so whatever okay so um back so, to my questions back to here questions I did want to get uh cause what, I've been we've been really going going talking a lot here um which is cool but I do want to hear yeah. more music so I'm going to kind of shorten up some of the okay. questions um, I wanted to hear Clark Fork, and when you sent me the uh, little blurb, you just you didn't mention what it was, but you said it has a really interesting story behind the oh, creation yeah, of yeah. it. So I wanted to kind of get that yes. out of you. I'll tell you that story. Um, so yeah, it um, that song came about. Uh, I had gone to. The uh, hot springs in Montana Quinns or whatever, or wherever, wherever that is. I think that's in Paradise or whatever. Um, and uh, when you're driving back, like when we drove over, it was kind of dark already, um, so I didn't really see the scenery. And it was my first time going that way. So when we were driving back, uh, the Clark Fork River there. Uh, if you're any kind of geology buff. Um, is spectacular like you know there's uplift um, from tectonic action and then there's you know volcanic rock and it's right, you know right. um, and and you have this you know it's just beautiful and, and there's all this stuff and then the rivers there and I sort of started thinking about the relationship between um, mountains and rivers and how it sort of how it relates to people and how it relates to relationships, you know, and I was like, you know, well, the river, uh, you know, it gets to do its thing, right? And then um, I was like, well, what does the mountain get out of this? You know, like, what is, what, it, what, it, what is it, its deal? Like, what does the mountain get out of, out of this relationship? And then it was like, well, I mean, because the river's slowly killing it. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's tearing it apart, it's wearing it down. It's like women, like, am I right? Oh, okay, no. <laughs> uh, it's like partners. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever yours is. Right. Um, <laughs> so um, I was like, what is the, what does the mountain get out of it? And I realized, I was like, well, you can go to the beach uh, in, in Oregon and you can find pieces of, you know, those mountains. Right. Uh, and it was like, well, that through that process, that mountain gets to go somewhere it was never going before. And I was like, right. that's the thing, right? You right. know, right. Um, that's uh, that's the ticket, and and that's what. And then so the whole song is, is pretty much just sort of uh, ponders the that relationship from the mountain's point of view, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. How no. But we don't have to do that. So no, we, I, I want do. you to play the no, I do. You play I do want to so. play it. I was just. Okay, that's it.
like that. Just escaped me. Um, 
You don't have to have an iPad out for yeah. all of my songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awful. <laughs> I know, it's right. What is the second verse? Uh, I remember the third one. Third verse, same as verse. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I wasn't throwing you off. I just no, you're good, man. I'm I'm always I can't play lead really, so it always I can't either. I love <laughs> I love uh I could just embellish. That's all I Yes. <laughs> there you go. Um Man. Yeah. We'll just move on. We'll pretend that never we happened. We will pretend that never happened. Right. We'll fix that. But post. it's still an interesting story of getting yeah, there. So yeah, it was. That. There is a great... <laughs> yeah. Um, so, when you when you were describing writing Lake Lenore, you yes. talked about being on a retreat with your daughter, Democratic Socialists of yeah. America. Um, and I was wondering how, how or if the song itself kind of ties into the theme of what it is you guys were doing with the, the whole the whole political side of it. And then if there's a larger theme to that in your writing in general. Um, oh, uh, well, um, I, my, yeah, I, I think I kind of mostly leave politics out of my songwriting okay um i i mean i'm heavily engaged in the whole thing uh you know in my normal life and like you know i'm i read a lot so i post stuff that you know I, yeah. i'm definitely a person who has opinions but like sort of songwriting uh, is a bit of an escape uh -huh. from that like uh -huh. you know and it it focuses I, I like focusing more on the I think that like we're at a place now where the problem is is that we have forgotten that we have more in common yeah than of course. we have differences yeah, right yeah, yeah. like you know the I have a I have a dear friend dear friend I love her to pieces she took off work to go take her kid to see Trump when he was in Montana. Like, <laughs> and like, you know, um, we could not be farther apart on that. But like, at the end of the day, like, we both want our kids to be happy. Right. And we both want our kids right. to, to grow up in a, you know, in a world that will sustain them and support them. And like, we may have different ideas about how to get there, but right. really, you know, we, you know, we want the same things. We have, right, but it, right. and and that's the thing. But it's this whole like, we've we've made it all in or out. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I will say one thing I worry about. Uh, you know, with my daughter and hi Alice, if you happen to listen to this, um, is that like, as she pushes farther, ideologically, in one direction. Um, you know, in my lifetime, like I have seen. Um, the Republican Party um, remake itself and um, you know they decided it was really interesting I was listening to the NPR last night and they were playing uh, they were playing a speech the bullets are ballots from Malcolm X um, and he was you know at that time Johnson was president Democrats controlled two thirds, like a full two thirds, oh, yeah. veto proof majority right. uh, in the in the Senate, and a huge like hundred seat majority in the House, and like, um, you know, and it was like, man, it took uh, it took the Republican Party another almost thirty years to right. crawl out from that, and then since then, they have pursued this ideological purity. Um, as a way to, you know, resonate with folks. They pick a couple of issues, and then it's like you have to. It is right. a hard. Red meat it is a yeah, yes yeah. or no, yeah, yeah. you know, thing. 
Um, and, but as they've done that, like it's pushed them further and further away from reality, and to the point where nobody knows how to govern anymore. Right. You know, and and like I, I don't mean to shit on one party or the other because like I have my issues oh, that's okay. with the other side too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, but like at least they still seem to know how to rally the troops and get shit done. Like, right, you can right. say what you want about Nancy Pelosi. She is a fantastically effective speaker. Oh, she's speaker. a very effective speaker. Like, that woman is ruthlessly effective. Right, right. Um, And good, because it gets things done. Right. Um, and I think we, you know, we need to remember that we're all in this together and we all want the same thing. You, we can't agree on how to get there, but those are minor right. differences. Right. And, you know, yeah, I don't, I'm tired of... Just tired. I'm tired. It's exhausting being right. a person in late stage capitalism right. in the 21st right. century. Well, and you know, in this, <laughs> it, it may seem like we're going sort of afield from music, but but it all does all kind of tie together, at least for me. That that like part of it is this sort of the the social media, the media itself. We're we're in this age where everything's quick, right? Even our yeah. consumption of music is right. quick. You know, we don't. People don't buy albums anymore. They yeah. stream Spotify. I know that was I, uh, know, when I was playlisting. I was like, there was a couple where it was like, you know, I put a whole album and I was like, look, here's the deal. There's a couple of places where I just put the whole record on there. You need to listen to that in order, top to bottom. Right. Like because right. you're missing out. And that just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And, but I, know, I remember that. I love that. Like oh, I, I can still too. like I I can still tell you that Paradise City was the break on Appetite for Destruction and right, like then right. you flip over to sides, you know flip it over to side B and like you know that was the thing and uh, Smashing Pumpkins are fantastic at, at sequencing an album right, to have right. a, a you're on a journey you know it's not haphazardly thrown together and now what happens is people put a single out and then if they bother to put a record out which increasingly people aren't doing and that's the other thing is like people don't write albums anymore right, a lot of right. artists are moving towards they're like why would I spend all this money? like you know I can put a single out um, right, right. Here and there, and I and I can tour. Why why put the seven songs nobody's gonna pay right. attention to right. out if I can do the three songs, three good songs, three singles, uh, and build a tour, which is where artists are making right. their money these right. days anyway. Or you know I can get that song licensed into whatever, right. um, which I'm sure you and I are on the same page. Like that used to be, like you were out of the club. Like, right, right. You can't do that. Right. But now it's like, <laughs> yeah. If you want to make a living as a musician, you can. You better, and you you better do that. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. you know, it, it's. I mean, be, you know, be choosy about it. Don't. But like, yeah. Anymore, I, and, and that's that sort of thing. Like, you know, it's I, idealism is the province of the young and the wealthy. Right. Right. Um. You know, because they don't. You know, they got. Whatever. Right. You know, they don't have the same constraints that we do. As much to lose. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's. Um, I'm, I tend to be a much more pragmatic person these days, and, right. and like I realize, yeah, I'm not, I can't have everything I want. I'm never gonna get everything I want. I don't want everything I want. Like right. I'm at a place now where I look back on my life and I'm like, man, like I am actually really glad that I dropped out of high school and got my GED and didn't go to college right away because if I had gone through mm. high school, gone straight to college, did the whole thing, like I would be insufferable twat like, right. like <laughs> I would just like you know I was like I was like oh, if I'd gone out of high school went to college gone to law school like become an attorney like yeah no I, I would be I would not be a person I care much about at, uh, at this point in my life and so like it's, it's weird though because you're like not getting what you want is actually good for you you right. know and it's right. I for years at my last job um Speaking of songwriting, that and sort of thinking back to songwriting and not always realizing the impact of it until later, um, I was listening to "Burning Down the House" by Talking Heads, which is a song that has been floating around most of my life. You know, um, do, 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 yeah, but that, that like infamous drum roll. I yeah. never really got but I was listening and I was just at this moment where and it's like the first lines are watch out you might get what you're after and all of a sudden that just bam it was right. like <laughs> oh because I was at a place where it was like oh well I had gotten what I wanted 
what I thought I wanted, right. and yeah. it was like it was killing me. Like right. you know, it was like I was miserable, and it was just it was bad. It was bad. Right. And it was like you know what, man, you do have to be careful about that. Right. You have to you know, right? Be careful what you wish for because you might get it, and like right. you know, and then you're stuck with it. Right. You have, you have to deal with. <laughs> well, that's that. a that's a theme that uh, that he's touched on in other stuff as well. I yeah, to be something he. Yeah, he does know, it like, in naivety too. It's sort right, of that same right. thing. Like, or, oh, I guess this is it. Uh, right. Or uh, you know, this is not my beautiful yeah. house. Right. This is not Once my in a lifetime. Life, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's that, that sort of idea. Like, well, what does it mean? Like, what do we need? What do we need anymore? Like, you know? Right. Um, in, in some ways, you know, I'm like, oh, it's a, I don't have enough stuff. You know? Um, but, like, I mean, growing up, dude, I could not imagine an iPhone. Right, like, right. Even, <laughs> even Star Trek couldn't imagine an iPhone. Right, like, right. You know, like, it's just inconceivable like how and in in some ways for the better because now we've you know largely democratized information and you know we've made it to where which is uh i mean that's a long-standing thing like you know one of the right. when you had balladeers or you had bards you know the, their whole job was right. to, to preserve to preserve yeah, and to yeah. tell stories yeah. and to to disseminate information you right. know and like um and that way there's a noble tradition with songwriting right. and some people are great at Steve Rose great right, at right, like right. uh but it also narrows James the narratory is great about oh yeah it. yeah he's, yeah you know Springsteen's great about it. but yeah it does narrow the narrative and right. it makes it it makes it of its time right you know right. and and so I think that was sort of a I remember when my ex was in uh was in grad school there was a somebody had like mentioned texting in a poem or something you know and it was like like why why would you do that like you have like you have tied that to this moment and right like, it it will not have all of the um right you know and and i was like oh yeah so like i right. try not to do that too much like right. I, try to I would say that sort of brings it full circle because that's i have the same thing it's one of the reasons i don't even though i'm a very political person I don't write political songs because, right. I, you know, it's hard to not, it's hard to be timeless. Yes. When you're like, hey, Trump, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know. Right. Um, unless you're Utah Phillips. Right. Or unless you're like, uh, you know, John Fogarty or something. Yeah. You know, like Run Through the Jungle. Right. Yeah, it's a song about Vietnam. But, right. I mean, it applies, yeah. you know, no matter when. Or, yeah, Woody Guthrie. Right? Yeah. You know, this machine kills fascists. Yeah. Well, we can still need that. Today. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, there's right. there's that thing. Huh? In a way, I guess it's kind of sad to think that how apt Woody Guthrie still is. Oh, you yeah. You know, like that Steve Earle song when he's like, come back, Woody Guthrie. Yeah. You know, come back to us now. Yeah. Um, it makes me just, it's, it's. It, it is, it's timeless, but it's also kind of sad that it's timeless because it's well, like we keep doing the same stupid well, it, shit it's over in, and over. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> a, it's interesting that, like, you know, I part of me wants to, I really, I had this idea that I floated with my kid that, like, I wanted to write uh, a series of songs about, uh, because our area actually has a really rich labor history. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, the Wobblies were The, the, the Wobblies, Washington. right, yeah, yeah the yeah. Spokane Free Speech Riot. Um, some great... Great Utah Phillips on a Franco collaboration about that you should check out. Um, it's a great bit of history. But um, yeah, I was like, I wanted to write a set of songs about it, and then like I was like, I I'm one of I tend to be one of those people who like I'm really good at visualizing. So like I'll get immediately like I'll think of something and I, I can all the steps are there. Like yeah, I yeah. see it top to bottom right there. I'm like oh man, we'll write songs and then I'll do some labor songs and it's like, and I'll fight for a grant and then I'll like, I'll go play at Union Hall. I'll get my MacArthur Genius Grant. Yeah, yeah, right? I was, like, I was like, I have this whole great idea for it and it was like, you know, then it was like, well, do we need that? And I was like, well, you know what? Here's the thing. It's like, people don't know that in Ludlow, Colorado, uh, the governor brought in a private security yeah, force, right? One Pinkertons, yeah. and they loaded up machine guns on train cars and right. shot up a camp full of women and children. Right, right. Yeah, people and don't know about that. That was yeah. just about a hundred years ago. Right. You know? Right. Um, you know, that's the country we live in. Right. Like, everybody's like, oh, no, we, can't, we don't need unions. Yeah, you do, man, because right. they'll kill you, and they've proven it. Right. Like, And people right. forget that. And I'm like, you. the minute you forget that this right. 
country will kill you as soon as they right. deem that you're unnecessary. If you're black, um, right. even if you're running to do the right thing, you're a good guy with a gun that they keep telling you you need. Right. Like, <laughs> don't be brown, don't be black. Right. You know, don't be in your car with a licensed weapon and try to turn it over to the cops. Right. And, you right. know, because they'll kill you. Right. Because right. you can't, you're, you're not the right yeah. thing. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Well, it's like how Ray, when Reagan was the, the governor of California, you know, and it was, you know, the suddenly became a pro uh, gun control when when the black panthers yes. carried their guns into the state house yes. <laughs> you know all of a sudden it was like well maybe we need gun control after all yeah <laughs> right <laughs> Let's play a little more music because uh, okay. it has been a while now. We're all, we're going on to two hours, which is a long. Oh time. my goodness! So uh, maybe a couple more songs, and then we'll we'll uh, try to wrap it up. Yeah, uh, let me. I'm gonna have to pop up the words here for Lake Lenore since I wrote them down. Somewhere. That's the finger picked one. And I go up here immediately. I'm like, oh, wait. Right. Wrong side of the cape. All right. Uh, yeah. Is there a. Uh, I just need, like. I'll just put it on the floor. Maybe. Um, how about well, if you were to put it on top of on that there? there. Uh, Is that going to work? Yeah. That'll work in Angle okay. Close enough. Alright. All right. We're high tech down here. Super. Make sure that doesn't go dark. Okay. All right. To kiss your lips, I left everything I'd known, and I fell harder than the stone in your eyes when you said the words you've been screaming at me, but somehow. Devils in the dust, a fading reminder of the love that was, and now we cry. But the tears they won't come. We try to find a way to carry on. I'm looking back. Guess I'm not surprised any fool could see the love fading from your eyes when you tried to pretend it didn't hurt, but in the end it just didn't work. Now we dance like devils in the dust, a fading reminder of a love that was, but we don't cry. Not the way we used to. Never thought that I'd get over you. But the desert changes things. Yeah, it does. Now we dance <laughs> like devils in the dust, a faded reminder of a love that was. Not the way we used to And I never thought I'd get over you Now we dance Like devils in the dust A fading reminder of the love that was But we don't cry Not the way we used to I guess that I'm finally over you Yes, I like the tune.
Yeah, so that one was, uh, it was the Dust Devils that, because that weekend ended up being really windy. Uh-huh. Like, like my beloved habitat uh, tent was just destroyed. Like oh, completely wow, yeah. destroyed by the wind. Um, so it was at Dry Falls. Um, it just got super windy, but I the little Dust Devils, and I was like, oh, that was the Dust Devils. And so it was fun. Like, I sometimes try to, um, yeah, sometimes try to force myself to, to do stuff and, and push right, myself right. To, to write more. But um, So we talked a little bit about not being political, um, but do you have, do you feel like in your writing, if you take in sort of the gestalt of it, like, do you feel like you have any sort of overriding themes or, or recurring ideas uh, that sort of come up? Being a person is hard and right. messy and complicated, and it hurts a lot of times. Like, I don't have a lot of, like, super happy songs. Like, right. I've always struggled with that. Like, it's really hard to... Uh, because again, it's that whole thing is like feels cheap, right? Like, right, right. Sun is shining, right, right. Grass is green, you know, like right. it just, I don't know. And like, people need it, I just, it's not my thing, like, right, right. I just can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't get out of my own way, I can't get over myself. I'm, right. I'm still too fucking cool for school. <laughs> um, and, well, what about recurring, like, do you have some? metaphors or images that tend to kind of keep coming back into your lyrics um yeah i but, space and place like like rivers i was like gonna say water. i noticed like rivers yeah. and yeah um that's in there a bunch and um yeah yeah but it's mostly just people stuff like, right um yeah it's like what's the last one <laughs> When's the last time I wrote a song? So, um, let's see. What is to you the most difficult aspect of songwriting? What do you find the hardest to do? Get out of my own way. Like, allow myself to do it. Like, that's the, the hardest thing. Like, uh, my friend Glenn Case writes yeah, yeah. more songs than any. That guy is stupidly pr- prodigious. Yeah, like, and I was right. like, I just... Like, I don't even get it. Right. Like, <laughs> like, I can't. I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't understand this. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. know how you do that. Like, I guess no. I could. Like, and I, I think that's, I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's sort of that thing. It's like, yes, I could. I could sit down and write a song every day. I could sit down and write a few songs every day, probably. Um, but am I going to get enough out of them? Like, am I right, going right. to, at the end of it, am right. I going to be like, I did a thing, you know? Like, right, right. Um, you know, am I going to feel okay about it? And, yeah, I don't know. It was that, that sort of thing. That, like, you just have to do it a bunch of times, and then all of a sudden you'll be good at it. Like, right, you know? Right. Um, and, yeah. I don't know. If, yeah. I, if I subscribed to that, I would be a much thinner person than I am now. Right. Like, <laughs> it's easy. You just do this every day. You do the same right, thing. You right. get in this routine, and then it goes. Right. And it's like, well... I mean, it's true, right? It I is mean, true. Like, yeah, to a degree. And it's But, again, it's like, yes, I could get that, but do I want it? Right. You know, do I want to be able to sit down and, 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 and like, I say, do I, could I, I could, I could, I could, I could, you know, I thought about it, like, we should do this again, where um, we take my notebooks and just find one that's not done, and then just do it. Just do it. Just right. put music right. to it, or put, like, you know, do, um, I think that would be, that would be fun, but, like, yeah, I could sit down, and I could force it, and I could make it happen, and I, right. you know, but I don't know that because ultimately this is a selfish thing for me like i'm doing this because i need to get something out right right and you get something out of yeah, it yeah and it's like i get something out of it and it's like and i want the i want the process to be rewarding you know and for me just right. cranking a song out isn't that rewarding like glory bound like it's not that rewarding right. if it comes too easy or if i don't think it's that great like you know and i don't get that payoff where right. right. you know, like with a, a big sky or right. a Clark Fork when I can remember to play it. Right. Um, which, right. again, that's a still a song that I'm like, I stopped playing it because I didn't think it was finished. I didn't think that, like, you know, I, I it was very repetitive and I struggle with that. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm easily distractible right. and I need my music to have a little, right. you know, 
Yeah, I'm really self-critical of like, especially the lyrically. Like, yeah. I really kick myself in the ass lyrically. Yeah. Like, it's like uh, that's just not up to where I want. Yeah, it yeah, to be, yeah. It's know? like I want, I want, I want imagery. I want it. To, I want that thing where I want to. I want you to be able to like close your eyes and right, feel right. It. And then it's like, but it's like at the same time, it's like I know I'm. I, it's it is about getting out of your own way. Yeah, you know. So I'm like, look, that guy wrote like, I feel like making love. That's yeah. all there is. There's nothing else to it. And it was a big hit. You yeah. know, like, and here I am, like, sweating over, you know, some internal rhyme structure that, to me, is, like, the bar I've got to reach, you know? <laughs> well, and the, let, let's, let's go even further. Somebody is getting really rich off Baby Shark. Right, right. You know? Right. Like, um... Yeah. Which I found myself singing to my dog the other day. <laughs> I don't even, my kid's in college, you know? I'm like, right. that's how pervasive that thing has gotten. Is the, the, like, oh, I'm singing, baby dog, do, 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 baby dog. I'm like, dog's 11. He's not a baby. Like, <laughs> you know? And it was like, oh, we're cute. Do, right, you know? Right. Yeah. But somebody did that. Do, 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 do. And it's like, that is really but it's yeah just get out of your own way right just do it right just put it out there that's my that's my get over we'll yourself boil this whole thing down to get over yourself right you're not that cool um right. and just embrace that <laughs> and just put it out there yeah that's the other thing is just put it out there like right. write bad right. songs play bad yes, songs that, uh, i'm always in, in yeah. that, like just yeah. don't you know like turn off that editor yeah go on someone you admire's show uh, and then forget how to play your own song. Ah. <laughs> Do that. Because it'll teach you something about yourself. Like, yeah, I did that. But, that's, you know, it's great that that resonates, you know, because that really resonates with me, too. That, that, because that's, like, if I had to sum up my life philosophy, even, it would be get over yourself. Like, yeah. to me, that's, like, that's what it means to grow up. Right. To get over yourself. It's yeah. like, you aren't the star of everyone's movie. Right. You know, you're yeah. only the star of your own movie. Right, exactly. You're an extra at best. Yeah, in most people's movies. Yeah, right? I know you worry so much about what other people think about you, and you're like, they don't think about you. They're like, not right. They're like, doing their thing. Right, you have inflated your importance in other right. people's lives. It's too. like when you get really mad at other drivers on the road. Yeah, and realize like they're just do they're just going A to B just like me. Yeah, I'm probably making someone else mad. Right. Yeah. You know, they're like not, they're not objectively doing something horrible. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people do. Right. Once they notice you, they may do something. Horrible. Right. But like, <laughs> so I try not to flip people off in traffic because I'm like, I don't right. want to inflame the situation. Right. Right. Like, just don't make it worse. Right. It's like the people that go all the way up to the front of the merging lane, you know, Dude. and everyone's like, you're such an asshole. But like, how do you know each person's story, right? Like someone might have been like, I didn't see the sign. Yeah. Nobody was letting no, me in. Nobody you know. knows to merge. And I also yeah. think that our, particularly downtown, uh, the on and off ramps are horrible. Oh, they're awful. They're, they're poorly awful. designed. They did never anticipate the amount of traffic right. that they have. There's not enough space in between them. Like, it's, it's a nightmare. Right. Yeah. I don't, uh, when it, like... If I walk out of here and it's snowing, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to drive Sprague Avenue all the way back out of my place in the valley because I just, I don't do the interstate too much. And like, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. avoid oh, it. Oh, I hate the interstate done. in the snow. Yeah. I was, that. I was, uh, I used to live in the Monroe district uh, and work downtown and I thought that was great because I could bike to work in like yeah. 15, 20 minutes. Like, and you know, now I live half mile from my office, you know, out in the valley, but you know, yeah. I don't, right. I'm not a, I'm not a big driver, but all my friends and everything's still in town, so I find right. myself driving a lot more than I want. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Yeah, maybe my kid will move to New York someday and I'll follow her there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, I'm sort of, this is, like, I've had this discussion before, like, this is, uh, this past Thanksgiving was the 20th anniversary of me moving to Spokane, and that is, officially, I've been here longer than anywhere. So like this is my town, man. Like right, I know, right. I go places, I see people, I know people. Like right, right. You know, I have a guy. Like I was, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, I've had the same insurance agent for like fifteen years. Right. Like <laughs> that's right, madness. Right. You know, right. I never thought I'd be that uh, that sort of person. But right. I, I haven't lived anywhere long enough as an adult to have that yet. Yeah. yeah well, I lived in Virginia a long time, but left there when I was in my early 20s and yeah. keep moving around. 
Yeah, I so I I, uh, I mean I was staying in Texarkana, but we bounced houses a lot, and then I went through that period where I was back and forth between Texarkana and Memphis, and that, uh, you know, for me it was important to try and give my kids that continuity of, uh, you know, like she she graduated high school with kids she went to kindergarten with. Right. Right. Know? Right. Uh, and I never had that. Like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know that was that was important to me, and then yeah, I just sort of like. Oh, here I'll be around right on. come find me because <laughs> I'm not good at booking or promoting so right <laughs> maybe you'll yeah. walk in somewhere and I'll be there playing awesome well uh it has been awesome talking to you I'm not ending I do want you to play another song we're gonna have like okay. a finale song but it's okay. kind of like wrapping things up yeah, yeah um unfortunately I could probably do this that's probably the problem the biggest problem I have with doing this format of the song project is that I could do it for five hours. Like, I yeah. love talking about songs. Right. I love talking about music and life. Yeah. And just having conversations. Someday I'll just have a podcast that's like eight hours long every day. It's just me talking to somebody. Yes. <laughs> but what are you going to give us for our, uh, our send-off um, here? I think, because I think I remember it, I'm going to play uh, Ryan Adams. Right on. Yeah. I did want to say, uh, and I'm sorry that we didn't get to it, but uh, when the, that song Search Your Lean, I really, I really liked yes. that. And it really reminded me, actually, that was where I first started thinking, like, okay, there's some Texas or some kind of thing happening here that reminds yeah. me of that Texas vibe. Um, but but it, that didn't quite fit. And then it finally struck me as, like, that song, it sounds like one of those... Um, acoustic songs that the Rolling Stones would have written like in the 70s, you know, yeah. when they would do like Wild Horses and those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah. It kind of had that, it definitely had that Stones vibe to it. Yeah. And, and as soon as that like, thought that, I was like, that's it. It's got that Stones vibe. Yeah. I think that this whole thing inspired me. I really tried to learn songs. I, and what I should have done is I should have been writing them down as I was doing it. So right, like, right. Like, oh yeah, I remember that. I'll remember that. Totally. <laughs> that's going to happen. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, so I'm gonna try and go back and mine stuff and, and really learn it. And like, I was like, oh, yeah, I should put some, some of these songs should like, you know, they should get the light of day. Right. Uh, again, they deserve better than to just sit around not being heard. Right on. So. So Ryan Adams. Yes, that's that's the name of. The Will song. it throw you off if once I sort of get the vibe, no. I kind of. No. Diddle around. No, the okay. only uh, the only people joining in that reliably throw me off are uh, cajon players and harmonicists. Okay. Yeah, those I I don't know what it is. It's there. I've met some talented, but for some reason I just can't. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. All right. <laughs> Thank you.
so sweet on your lips But sooner or later They make you feel like shit But we need them like water The air that we Baby, put on your cape Paint your lips, feel well And jump over this building And save me from Lucas McIntyre. Mr. Dirt. It's been awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. I am thrilled to have done it. Okay, so good night to the now it's 12.7 billion viewers. Wow. Yeah. It's, we've exceeded the population of the Earth. Man. People are tuning in from Alpha Centauri. Beaming into space. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys next week. Maybe I'll get on um on Valentine's Day, or maybe I'll be out with my wife. But I, I don't really like to go out on Valentine's Day that much because it's crowded. It's just yeah. And there's all the stuff. Yeah. 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 And we treat each other good every day. So that's there you go, man. Don't need a special day for it. In fact, I think what would in protest of that kind of the consumerist capitalist bullshit. That's right. We're gonna actually like do the opposite so we're just gonna like Stay go home. off on our own and not even look or talk at each other 
just to protest Valentine's Day. Yeah. If you want <laughs> at, at this point in your life, if you want to do something really romantic uh, with your wife, like just uh, watch the Hallmark Channel and fold laundry with her. Oh, and like, yeah, 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 man. I've been married three times. I know how it works. <laughs> I don't know why I can't sustain it, but at this point, I, I know how it's supposed to work. Right. I'm just something in the execution. Just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was just thinking that uh, the other day how uh, the last time I dated, I went out on a date with a woman who wasn't my wife. In the 1980s, dude. Because <laughs> wow. we got, I met her, I mean, maybe early 90. I can't remember if I was dating somebody. Did you do like a Ross and Rachel thing? No, it wasn't. Because I, because I, because I, cause I, uh, I met her in May of 90 and we got married in October huh? of 90. Damn, that was. Oh, dude. I met her in May when she was pregnant by July, I think. And then we got married in October. So kind of amazing that it's that it, we've we've come this far, uh, almost thirty years. That now. is that is remarkable. But I wasn't dating anybody at the time, so I think it really was actually the nineteen eighties when I last had a girlfriend uh, besides my lovely That's partner, a, yeah. partner in crime. All right. Thank you again. My pleasure. Off into the darkness we go here.